manual. My name is Sydney Guman, and I'm part of the AgriLinks team that is helping to host this event. I'm excited to be joined today by three ladies from USAID's Bureau for Food Security. We have Wendy Corson and Caitlin Lesnick, who will be presenting. And also, you may see Jen Cup in the webinar chat pod, and she's going to help facilitate this discussion and answer questions in the chat. So welcome, ladies. Before we begin, I wanted to mention a few housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being recorded and will be available to um, everyone on the Feed the Future branding page um, for anybody who is not able to join today. We will be sending out the link to this recording along with other post-event resources in about a week to everyone who has registered, so keep an eye out for that email. Second, we encourage you to ask questions throughout today's presentation and to talk to your fellow participants. You may do so by typing into the chat pod lo located in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Jen will try to answer as many questions as possible within the webinar chat. If we have time, we will also pose unanswered questions to our presenters after their presentation. Um, finally, we want to let everyone know that there will be a few interactive questions throughout today's presentation. And this, this is to try to help uh, test the new skills you're learning during the presentation. Please keep an eye out in your, our poll pod, which is located in the upper right-hand corner of your sc screen, for these questions to appear. Our presenters will ask each question, and then we will pause for about 15 to 30 seconds for everyone to respond. Once everyone enters the response, we'll broadcast the results of our poll so everyone can see how the group did. Please know that your specific answers will be anonymous, so don't feel shy about trying to answer the question. Thank you for your patience as we went through these housekeeping items, and I'll now hand it over to our first presenter, Wendy Corson, to start off today's presentation. Thank you, Sydney. And hello and good morning or afternoon or evening for those who are um, dialing in from all around the globe. Uh, my name is Wendy Corson. I'm the Director of Communications for the Bureau for Food Security at USAID. I'm joined today by Caitlin Lesnick, who's our Deputy Director of Communications here in BFS, and you'll hear from her in just a moment. Thanks again for joining us today. Before we start, I'd like to briefly outline what we'll be covering today. We'll be doing a quick overview of what Feed the Future is, followed by the recent updates to the USAID policy and regulations. Then we'll go into some details for the Feed the Future graphic and naming standards manual, including project naming and branding and marking. Then we'll open it up for any questions you might have. This training will be recorded and posted to the AgriLinks website for review. So if you miss something or if you need to jump off at any point, don't worry. As most of you probably already know, Feed the Future is the U.S. government's global hunger and food security initiative. With a focus on smallholder farmers, particularly women, Feed the Future supports countries in developing their own agriculture sectors to generate opportunities for economic growth that can help reduce poverty and hunger. Feed the Future is a whole of government presidential initiative focused on global food security and nutrition and it draws on the resources and expertise of 11 federal departments and agencies, which are listed on the slide here. To learn more about Feed the Future, you can visit feedthefuture.gov. We're here today because there have been some recent updates to USAID's Automated Directive Systems Chapters 320 and 303, in addition to the Code of Federal Regulations Title II, Part 700, which now allow for branding exceptions for presidential and other high-level interagency initiatives. On December 29, 2014, former USAID Administrator Shaw signed a special determination that allows Feed the Future to provide its own naming, marking, and branding guidance to USAID and implementing partners. To date, Feed the Future is the only presidential initiative to obtain such a determination. Taken together, these updates will result in changes to naming and branding and marking for USAID-funded Feed the Future projects, programs, and activities. For your reference, here is specific language that has been inserted into the ADS and the CFR. As you can see, it says that upon a written determination by the USAID administrator or designee, the definition of the USAID identity may be amended to include additional or substitute use of a logo or seal and tagline representing a presidential initiative or other high-level interagency federal initiative. Again, as of this date, Feed the Future is the only presidential initiative to obtain the written determination referenced here. There have been a lot of questions about which mechanisms these new branding guidelines apply to. A decision was recently made by USA leadership that Feed the Future naming, marking, and branding will apply only to newer mechanisms, specifically 
USAID Finance to Feed the Future activities that operate in Feed the Future focus or aligned countries, utilize 50% or more Feed the Future funding, and are issued on or after January 1, 2015. The guidance will also be mandatory for modifications to existing awards, which require a justification to restrict eligibility, a JRE, or a justification and approval, a J&A, &A, and which, standing alone for successive JREs or J&As, cumulatively extend the period of performance by one or more years from the original end date. In short, for extensions of a year or more that include funding. I'm now going to turn it over to Caitlin Lesnick, who will talk a little bit more about branding specifics. Thanks, Wendy. Before I get into the graphic and naming standards manual, let me talk a little bit more about why we care about Feed the Future branding. Building a brand is important for fostering trust and motivating action, creating a positive image of our work and building social capital among stakeholders. Since 2010, thanks to the work of many of those listening today, Feed the Future has made tremendous progress toward empowering smallholder farmers and supporting partner countries in developing their own agriculture sectors. We're very proud of the amazing work that's already been done under the banner of Feed the Future, and it's important that our many audiences see the value of these efforts as well. While we know we need to be flexible and adapt communications to specific country and project activities, the Feed the Future initiative has developed branding standards and guidance to promote common elements across Feed the Future materials. If the guidelines are followed, we believe that we can achieve our branding objectives. We can enhance the visibility and value of Feed the Future, and we can improve the impact and consistency of communications across agencies and implementers. The first step in building a global Feed the Future brand is to develop a visual identity that is used consistently and accurately on USAID-funded Feed the Future project communications materials. One of the first ways to help establish our identity is by using standardized project names. Given the large number of USAID-funded Feed the Future projects, having consistent project name standards across Feed the Future activities will be critical to enhancing the visibility of the initiative. The criteria or formula for Feed the Future project names is really quite simple. First, all project names must begin with Feed the Future, so even when used in the absence of the logo, the name can be immediately associated with the Feed the Future initiative. Second, all project names must reference the country or region where the project works. By specifically referencing a project's country or region, we can avoid confusion over similarly named Feed the Future projects across the globe. If a project is global in nature, you can omit the reference or use the word global instead. A few additional rules to remember when you're creating a new project name. Don't use jargon or acronyms. External audiences may not be familiar with the programs or issues. Do not use FTF. Always say and spell out Feed the Future completely in public communications. Do not reference implementing partners or internal organizational structures. For instance, do not say Implementing Partner X's Feed the Future Ethiopia Value Chain Activity. It should be Feed the Future Ethiopia Value Chain Activity. Do not preface Feed the Future with USAIDs. Remember that although Feed the Future is led by USAID, it is a US government initiative. Project names must start with Feed the Future. Don't promote or brand bureaus or offices. And finally, do not use or develop separate project or program specific logos or brand marks. As you formulate project or program names, please remember to keep them simple, concise, and descriptive of the activities or goals. The objective is to have someone who has no prior knowledge of the activity be able to read the project name and immediately understand what it does or what its goals are and its association with the Feed the Future initiative and the U.S. government. If you have any questions related to branding and project names, please contact us at feedthefuturebranding at usaid.gov or visit feedthefuture.gov slash branding. On this slide, we've listed a few correct project name examples. As you can see, they each follow the naming guidelines, Feed the Future plus the country or region plus a simple description of the activity. In contrast, this slide shows several examples that are incorrect. The first, WINS, doesn't incorporate Feed the Future or the country or region, and it uses an acronym, which is not allowed in the new branding guidelines. The second starts with USAID, 
when it should just start with Feed the Future. It also does not describe what the project does or its goals. And the third also uses an acronym, which is not permissible, and it does not incorporate the country or region or the word global. So now we're going to put your new knowledge to the test. You should see a poll appearing in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. We'll give you a few moments to vote on which example you think contains an incorrect Feed the Future project name example. Is it one, two, or three? All right, let's see how we did. Looks like most people got it. All right, so the incorrect project name is indeed number three. Uh, that's because the project name here starts with, oh, excuse me, starts with USAID and not with Feed the Future. Um, as you recall, Feed the Future is a whole of government initiative and project names should not begin with the names of federal agencies. So now I'll pass it back to Wendy to talk about our logo and other elements of our branding guidance. Thank you, Caitlin. Logos are one of the most important aspects of any organization or initiative's overall brand or identity. The current Feed the Future logo was developed in November 2011 after a consultative process integrating feedback and perspectives from multiple development stakeholders. The Feed the Future logo incorporates three different elements that must always be used together. The Great Seal of the United States, the Feed the Future tagline, the U.S. government's Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative, and the initiative's name, Feed the Future. Users should not recreate the logo, skew proportions, or use alternative colors. The Feed the Future logo is available in two formats, horizontal with a seal to the left of the text treatment and vertical with a seal above the text treatment. Horizontal is the preferred arrangement, so users should try to incorporate that version whenever possible. A positive format refers to color version of the logo on a white background, and a reversed format refers to a white Feed the Future logo on a color background. When the Feed the Future logo is used in positive format, the approved colors are blue, green, and black. Blue is the primary Feed the Future color, and it is the preferred color for the logo. The tagline, the U.S. government's Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative, must always be in black when the logo appears on a white background. Again, the logo is available as both horizontal or vertical arrangement, but horizontal is the preferred arrangement. When the white Feed the Future logo is displayed on a color background, approved background colors include blue, green, black, or orange. While we didn't have enough room to show it on this slide, orange is also an acceptable background color when the logo is used in white. Please remember that blue is the primary Feed the Future color and the preferred background color for the logo. The Feed the Future logo has specific sizing requirements to ensure that it's always clear and legible. All three elements of the logo, including the tagline, must be visible and large enough for readers. To help achieve that, the horizontal logo must always be at least 2 inches, or 5.08 centimeters specifically, wide in all communications materials. And the vertical logo must always be at least 1.625 inches or 4.191 centimeters in all communications materials. Likewise, the Feed the Future logo also has specific spacing requirements. An, a minimum area or clear space surrounding the Feed the Future logo must be kept free of any other text or graphic elements. It's actually an easy rule to remember. The letter D from the word feed determines the height and width of the clear space around the logo, as you can see on this slide. This slide shows some examples of how the logo was used on a color background. These two examples are correct because they both meet with the requirement for minimum clear space surrounding the logo, and they both use blue and green, which are both approved background colors. Remember that blue is the primary Feed the Future color and is the preferred color for logo use. In contrast, this slide shows examples of a logo use that do not comply with Feed the Future's branding manual. The first example uses a red background color. Red is not a Feed the Future approved color. The only approved background colors for the logo are blue, green, orange, or black. The second example has the tagline in blue. 
This is incorrect because when using a color logo against a white background, the tagline must be in black. The third example is incorrect because the logo is placed over a busy image that hides the Feed the Future logo and is hard to read. The logo may be overlaid on top of a photograph or pattern background. However, the logo must still be clear and legible. The photograph or pattern must not be so distracting that it obscures the logo or pulls attention away from it. A few final reminders on logos. Do not recreate the logo. You can download the correct logo files at feedthefuture.gov branding. We are also working on providing versions of the logo with the tagline, the U.S. government's Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative, that are translated into several different languages. You can also submit branding-related questions to feedthefuture. Excuse me, feedthefuturebranding at usaid.gov. It's feedthefuturebranding at usaid.gov. Now, Caitlin will take us through our color palette and font. Great. So, color is another important element of brand identity. The Feed the Future colors were chosen carefully to reflect the vision of the initiative. Feed the Future's five approved colors are blue, green, orange black, and gray. Blue represents the future, green represents agriculture, orange represents hope, and black represents the soil. As Wendy mentioned earlier, blue is the primary Feed the Future color and should be used whenever possible. Green and orange are the secondary colors and can be used to complement the blue within one product or can be used when a project is producing a series of publications that are meant to have a similar but slightly varied look and feel. Black and gray are accent colors. Black should be used for text, and gray should be used for items such as text boxes uh, and color fields. Those two colors should be used sparingly. Now let's try another survey. Which color here is a Feed the Future approved color? Is it one, two, or three? We'll give everyone a few moments to vote um, in the upper right-hand corner of their screen. All right, looks like most people got it. The green color is the approved Feed the Future color. Use only approved colors as specified in the Feed the Future graphic and naming standards manual. Moving on to fonts, fonts are also an important design element. They help differentiate such information elements as headers, main text or captions, and they help promote consistency among Feed the Future products. Feed the Future has four approved font families for all USAID-funded Feed the Future project communications. They include Gil Sands, Arial, Adobe Garamond, and Times New Roman. Gil Sands is the brand's primary font and is generally used for shorter publications like fact sheets, brochures, and signage. When Gil Sands is not available, you can use the default font, Arial. Adobe Garamond is an alternative font that can be used for technical and longer reports. When it is not available, you can use the default font, Times New Roman. As we discussed on the previous slide, Gil Sands is the brand's primary font, especially for shorter products such as banners, fact sheets, and brochures. You can use Gil Sands Regular and Gil Sands Light for headers and body text, Gil Sands Bold for headers, subheads, and highlighted text, Gil Sands Italic for captions, Gil Sands Italic can be used for quote text. We, uh, but we also know that not all computers are installed with the Gil Sands font. So, when Gil Sands Regular and Gil Sands Lite are not available, please use Arial Regular. When Gil Sands Bold is not available, use Arial Bold. When Gil Sands Italic is not available, use Arial Italic. And when Gil Sands Lite Italic is not available, use uh, Arial Italic as well. For technical reports or longer reports, you can use Adobe Garamond font. Use Garamond Regular and Garamond Bold for body text and Garamond Italic for captions. For headers and subheads, you can use the Gil Sands Bold. When Garamond Regular is not available, then use Times New Roman Regular. When Garamond Bold is not available, then use Times New Roman Bold. When Garamond Italic is not available, use Times New Roman Italic. And when Gil Sands Bold is not available, use Arial Bold. It's time for another survey. 
So look in the upper right hand of your screen and let us know which font shown here you think is incorrect. Is it one, two, or three? We'll give you all a few moments. All right. Hopefully this one was fairly obvious. Looks like pretty much everybody got it. The second answer is the one that is incorrect because a script font is not an approved Feed the Future font. Please use only approved fonts as specified in the Feed the Future graphic and naming standards manual. So far, we've covered Feed the Future's core graphic and naming requirements, including the Feed the Future logo, size and space requirements, fonts, and colors. Wendy's now going to re review the templates and guidance for the design of Feed the Future global interagency acquisition and assistance materials. Thank you, Caitlin. So Feed the Future regularly creates new products directed toward a broad or global audience. These materials are generally referred to as global materials, as Feed the Future global materials must display the logo prominently, as these examples do. Examples of global materials include the Feed the Future website, reports, fact sheets, newsletters, presentations, banners, and similar products. They are usually produced at, at headquarters by USAID on the BFS communications team. Global products will almost always feature Feed the Future logo very prominently. Additional use of the USAID logo or those of other US government agencies contributing to the initiative will be decided on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the particular product. The USAID Bureau for Food Security Communications and Outreach team will determine the cases based on the recommendation from COs, AOs, CORs, AORs, and in consultation with the Bureau for Legislative and Public Affairs at USAID. This slide shows an example of a Feed the Future branded publication aimed at a global audience. The Feed the Future color, font, size, and space specifications must be followed at all times. The Feed the Future logo must be prominently displayed, placed at the top left of the publication cover. As we mentioned before, blue is the primary Feed the Future color and the preferred color for the logo or the background color. The secondary colors, green, orange, may be used, but they are reserved for special circumstances. For example, they can be used to distinguish individual products that are either a part of a comprehensive suite or are often paired, but may also be used as standalone materials. The secondary colors may also be used when placement of the white Feed the Future logo or underlying color banner background color would conflict with a specific product design. We just ask that you always consider using blue first before considering the secondary color options. Another important component is the Feed the Future website address. The website address, www.feedthefuture.gov, must be included on at least the final page of the publication. The web address may also be included on other pages. The address should be aligned according to the design of the product and written using one of our approved fonts. Where possible, the official logos of all 11 agencies that make up the Feed the Future initiative may also be used in addition to the Feed the Future logo. Do not include additional logos or text within the top area, which the arrow points to on this slide. Here is an example of our PowerPoint template. Please contact your AOR or COR for the most recent PowerPoint template or visit feedthefuture.gov branding to download PowerPoint templates. Feed the Future Orange should be used for header text or the text introducing each slide. The header text on PowerPoint slides should be used in all capital letters and centered. The final slide should include the vertical Feed the Future logo on, in white on a blue background. Presenters should not place additional text or logos in the blue banner on the top. We know that's tempting. Please don't do it. <laughs> Another template that is used frequently is for fact sheets. Feed the Future publishes fact sheets to provide a brief description of cross-cutting issues or to highlight accomplishments. You can find many fact sheet examples at feedthefuture.gov. Again, please follow Feed the Future color, font, and size and space specifications at all times. Blue, again, is the preferred color for the top banner of fact sheets. Don't place additional logos or text within the top banner. Again, if we know it's tempting, please don't do it. 
half inch margin should be used for content and the URL for the Feed the Future website and should be centered at the bottom of the page. Let's do another test to review branding for global products. Which image here shows an incorrect example of a global materials template? One, two, or three? We'll give you a few moments. All right, we are collecting results. And it looks like most of you got it. The third one is incorrect because no text or logos other than the Feed the Future logo should be placed within the top banner. We should point out that, again, that Feed the Future is a whole of government presidential initiative that draws on the resources and expertise of 11 federal departments and agencies. Therefore, where appropriate and permissible by individual agency policy and regulations, U.S. government agencies that participate in the Feed the Future initiative and have projects in the field may choose to co-brand their products. In such instances, all co-branded products or publications must follow the Feed the Future color, font, size, and space specifications. The Feed the Future logo should be placed at the top left corner, as shown here. The official interagency logo or logos must be placed at the bottom of the page, and the Feed the Future logo must be of at least equal size and prominence to the interagency logos. Interagency partners should direct any questions about using the Feed the Future branding to feedthefuturebranding at usaid.gov. I'll turn it back to Caitlin now to discuss acquisition and assistance instruments. Thanks, Wendy. And I think that these two next sections are going to be um, most interesting and applicable to a lot of the folks in the audience today. So, um, materials for Feed the Future activities conducted under acquisition instruments, which generally means contracts from USAID, should include both the Feed the Future and USAID logos. Feed the Future and USAID co-branded products may include case studies, reports, or approved project websites highlighting Feed the Future activities funded through a specific contract or other acquisition instrument. Exceptions to this requirement must be approved by a review team consisting of the COR, the CO, and the BFS communications and outreach team. This slide shows an example of logo placement for a publication cover. Feed the Future color, font, size, and space specifications must be followed at all times. The Feed the Future logo should be placed prominently in the top left corner. Again, no additional language or logos should be placed within the top banner. The USAID logo must be positioned at the lower left in accordance with USAID ADS 320 and the USAID Graphic Standards Manual. The Feed the Future logo at the top must be of at least equal size and prominence to the USAID logo. No separate partner logos are allowed for acquisition instruments. And, as a reminder, Feed the Future guidelines do not support the creation or use of separate project or program-specific logos. Materials for Feed the Future activities conducted under assistance instruments, generally grants or cooperative agreements from USAID, should include the Feed the Future logo, the USAID logo, and assistance or co-funding partner institutional logos. Examples include case studies, reports highlighting Feed the Future activities funded through a specific assistance agreement, and approved project websites. Exceptions must be approved by a review team consisting of the AOR, the AO, and the BFS communications and outreach team. For example, partners can request to retain more prominent institutional branding for certain publications, such as technical papers and research publications, on a case-by-case -case basis through their AOR. This slide shows an example of how a fact sheet might look for an assistance instrument. As we mentioned before, Feed the Future color, font, size, and space specifications must be followed at all times to ensure consistency across all print and electronic communications materials for Feed the Future activities. The Feed the Future logo should be placed prominently at the top left corner. Only the Feed the Future logo is allowed within the top banner. Do not include any additional logos or text there. The USAID logo must be positioned at the lower left in accordance with USAID ADS 320 
and the USA Graphic Standards Manual. In the case of assistance mechanisms, partner institutional logos can be placed to the right of the USA logo at the bottom of the publication. The Feed the Future logo at the top must be of at least equal size and prominence to the USAID and any partner logos. Again, the creation or use of separate project or program logos is not allowed. Lastly, let's go over the requirements for videos. Feed the Future color, font, size, and space specifications must be followed in video productions. The Feed the Future logo should be included on the introductory and closing frames. The Feed the Future URL should be included in the closing frame of any video. Co-branded videos used by acquisition and assistance mechanisms must place the USA logo below the Feed the Future logo and to the left of the screen, with implementing partner institutional logos to the right for assistance mechanisms only. Thanks, Caitlin. This includes the presentation portion of our training for the Feed the Future Naming, Marking, and Branding 101. We hope the information in this webinar was helpful and thank you in advance for your help in promoting more consistent and effective communications throughout Feed the Future products so that we can strengthen the identity and visibility of this important initiative. Again, thanks for joining us today, and I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that this branding guidance is new. We are sort of trailblazing uh, in this effort to uh, expand the interagency U.S. government uh, Feed the Future branding guidance. It has not been done before. Um, so just to stress, this is really new to all of us, and we appreciate your patience and flexibility as we all become familiar with it and adapt um, and move forward together to continue branding consistently together. Um, I will now turn it back over to Sydney and just remind everyone to please visit feedthefuture.gov slash branding for more information on branding and to download updates and the latest information, including on the graphic and naming standards manual, the Feed the Future logos, and other templates. Okay. I'd like to thank our presenters today, Wendy Corson and Caitlin Lesnick, and Jen Cup for answering uh, some questions in the webinar chat. We're now going to move into our question and answer portion of the webinar. It looks like we have about 40 minutes. Um, before we do this, we're going to take about a five minute pause to make sure we've collected questions and then to give everyone a chance to talk amongst themselves. Um, I'm going to start a countdown clock here on the screen and we hope we look forward to, oops, sorry, it says 15 minutes. I'm going to set that to five and we look forward to seeing everyone back in about five minutes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Um, great questions coming in. We have um, so many. Um, just a reminder that if we don't get a chance to answer your question, or if you have specific questions about the design, funding, or whether this applies to you, I just want to remind you to please email feedthefuturebranding at usa.gov. Again, feedthefuturebranding at usa.gov, and they'd be happy to get back to you with that specific answer. So we'll start with our first question. Um, who does this apply to? Kind of broad. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. Uh, this is Wendy Corson again. Um, and just want to flag, we're getting a lot of excellent questions. Um, we know that this is still new to everybody. Um, for new awards, the requirements for Feed the Future naming, branding, and marking um, were issued. All of this was issued on January 1st. Some of the delay in additional information was just that we were trying to make sure we were clear and could be clear with all of you um, who else it applied to. We knew we were going to have a lot of questions from our existing mechanisms. Um, so this information did go out um, through our notes to the field. Um, our cores and AORs were encouraged to share it, as well as our COs and AOs. Um, so we do, again, thank you all for uh, your patience and flexibility in absorbing and adapting to this new policy. Um, so we'll cover who is affected one more time. And as you can see, we put the branding updates slide back up that outlines it. Um, I'll just go through it one more time uh, because it's really important to uh, remind everyone who actually has to apply these new requirements. So these uh, naming, marking, and branding guidance uh, regulations apply to USAID acquisition and assistance awards for which Feed the Future funds constitute over 50% of the total estimated cost, in, which includes awards that are issued on or after January 1st, 2015, which includes task orders and associate awards. So new awards issued on or after January 2015 fall into the, yes, I have to apply this branding, naming, and marking guidance. In addition, 
modifications to existing awards. Basically, anybody who's getting getting or uh, will have an extension that's costed that will last a year or longer after the project's original end date. This uh, applies to acquisition and assistance again. Um, will be required to apply the uh, branding, naming, and marking guidance. Um, we should also flag that anyone who doesn't fall into this, if there's an existing uh, project that was awarded perhaps in September, October of 2014 that has a, a long uh, term in it and wants to apply these branding guidance, we highly encourage it. Um, this is new and it's an exciting opportunity that's beneficial really to all of us to help promote something that we're all contributing to through this presidential initiative. Um, so. We would just flag that if it's something that your project is interested in applying and you perhaps predate this January 1st, 2015 date um, and want to go ahead and apply it, just work through your core or AOR. Um, and please do send your questions to feedthefuturebranding at usa.gov and we'll be glad to answer them and provide support in your implementation uh, forward. OK, question number two. And this is another one that's being asked by a lot of people. So why create separate branding for presidential initiatives like Feed the Future? It's a great question. Uh, we have heard this a lot. And actually, while we were in uh, the long process to um, create and uh, work through implementation guidance on the uh, Feed the Future branding, marking, and naming, um, we really wanted to be clear that Feed the Future is the US government's global hunger and food security initiative. So it's led by USA, but we're really coordinating with 10 additional US government departments and agencies, in addition to all of our wonderful implementing partners that are helping us achieve such outstanding success through the initiative. Um, so unique and consistent branding for Feed the Future really helps us elevate its status as a presidential initiative and strengthens this whole of government identity that really allows us to showcase the great work that U.S. leadership is really contributing to to reduce hunger, poverty, uh, and undernutrition. So we're really trying to use the branding and naming standards to promote common elements across Feed the Future materials, regardless of location, audience, or participating federal agency. So by adhering to the new requirements, you're really helping better align your project and organization with this worldwide mission and a set of really common goals that are carried out through Feed the Future. Uh, so you know, again, we appreciate the question, and we hope uh, that answers. Great. Question number three, can Feed the Future projects be named in a language other than English? So this is Caitlin. I'll take this one. Um, yes, we're very excited to say that we have an updated Feed the Future graphic and naming standards manual coming out um, hopefully over the sec next several days. Um, and that one's going to include a little more specificity on how you can do this. But basically, um, you can incorporate local languages by following um, the same guidance that you normally would for Feed the Future project naming. So you need to start with Feed the Future still in English. Um, you would include the country, region, or the word global in the appropriate language. Um, then you would include the description, a uh, concise description, of what the project does or its goals. And that can be used in the local language. Um, so like we said, you'll need to include Feed the Future in English for the official project name still. Um, but when you reference it in text, you can um, use parentheses and, and translate it. Um, the rest of the naming guidelines apply. So we ask that you not use acronyms in the local language or in English. Um, because again, the objective is to clearly communicate to the relevant audiences what the project is meant to do. Um, so hopefully that will allow people to do that a little better in country. Thank you. And our next question, we actually have two parts of this one. Um, the first part is, will Feed the Future be providing a translated logo? And then a lot of people were asking when these logos might be available. Yeah, so this is Caitlin again. Um, yes, we are working to produce several versions of the Feed the Future logo with the tagline, the US government's Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative, translated into Spanish, French, Portuguese, and several other local languages. Um, we hope to have that first set of Spanish, French, and Portuguese um, up and available online for download in the next week or so. Um, so thanks to all the missions and everyone else who has been helpful in getting those processed. Um, new editions of the logo will be available at feedthefuture.gov branding. Um, 
the other thing to mention, oh, if you work um, or if you're an implementer or a doc at a mission and you feel that a translated version of the logo would be useful to you for your project activities, please just let us know and we'll try to work to get that developed. And you can just send us an email at feedthefuturebranding at usaid.gov about that. Thank you. Um, so question number five, what about projects co-funded by public international organizations like the World Bank and World Food Program? All right, so that's a good question. That's one that we, we get a lot, of course. Um, so basically, the, the USAID guidance on PIOs and branding um, has not changed. Um, public international organizations, or PIOs, are generally exempt from Feed the Future branding requirements because those organizations are typically multi-donor funded. However, there are a couple of cases where Feed the Future branding would apply. Um, and I should say nam naming, marking, and branding would apply. That would be if the PIOs are competing with NGOs for grants, if Feed the Future is the sole donor through USAID, or if uh, other bilateral organizations will be including their logos on project materials. So if there's any question about that for any upcoming um, mechanisms, um, just let us know and we're happy to work through it with the, the AOR, the COR. Great, thank you. Question number six. Can you talk briefly about how this will affect the Feed the Future Innovation Labs? I think a lot of people were asking about that. Yes, thank you for the question. This is Wendy Corson again. Um, we love our innovation labs, and we're really glad for that question. We've had a lot of discussion about the innovation labs, um, and we think we know a lot of you uh, innovation lab uh, reps are on the webinar now, so thanks for joining. Um, for anyone in the audience who doesn't know, um, there, there are 23 Feed the Future Innovation Labs, which are a unique network supported by over 60 top US colleges and universities, along with many of our partner country research and educational institutions. These labs are on the cutting edge of efforts to research, develop, and scale technologies that address challenges posed by the need to feed a growing global population. We understand that the innovation labs, which are such a unique network, have specific concerns about branding, particularly about the Feed the Future guideline that prohibits the development and use of program-specific logos. We want to ensure all of the innovation labs that those concerns have been heard. We're discussing the issue internally with Feed the Future leadership, and we appreciate your continued engagement on this issue. Um, the questions have been very helpful as we've been informing sort of our next steps and implementing the branding rollout. We hope to engage the Innovation Lab directors um, and other members on this in the near future. And we're sure we can find a solution that's both compliant with the regulations and consistent across the initiative. And we do want to uh, make sure we're emphasizing that, that with this branding exercise and um, implementing the policy, we do want to make sure that we're hearing the, the questions and having an open dialogue and really understanding um, what some of the concerns and challenges are and working with you um, to come up with solutions uh, for questions that may be not so cut and dry within the graphic naming and standards uh, manual, but that we are continuing to remain very consistent with the guidance that all of our implementing partners um, and us here at headquarters are going to be required to follow. Thank you for that uh, response. Wendy, um, so we have so many questions coming in. Um, unfortunately, we're going to need to take another five-minute pause. I'm going to put the countdown clock back up on the screen. We're going to collect more of the questions, see what we can do about, um, you know, combining que uh, uh, like-minded questions coming. And if you don't, if we don't get a chance to respond to your question now, please email feedthefuturebranding at usa.gov, and we'll see you again in five minutes. Okay, thanks again for some great questions coming in. Um, the first one, on the USAID logo, what about the country sub-brand? There were many questions related to this. Yeah, that's a really good question. This is Caitlin. Um, thanks for asking it. Uh, we didn't really specify in the, the graphic and standards uh, manual, but yes, uh, missions can definitely apply the, the country sub-brand of their USAID logo, whatever you would normally be using in your USAID branded products. Go ahead and place that where, in our examples, we've placed the USAID logo. Okay. And question number two, how does branding apply to project field signs? Yes. So uh, we actually didn't include any specific examples of project field signs in this presentation. But if you look at the manual, the current manual on page 27, there is one example of a project field sign. That one is actually meant for um, 
is an example for interagency branding in the case where an interagency partner may want to use Feed the Future naming, marking, and branding. Um, but on that example, you'll see that it follows a very similar uh, placement. So Feed the Future brand prominently in the upper left, the um, USAID logo in the lower left, and if it were um, an assistance mechanism, they would also include the um, institutional logos for the implementing partners to the right of the USAID logo. One other thing you will note on the project sign is that we don't actually say the word Feed the Future in the project name, um, even though it is part of the official name. And the reason for that is um, just because of placement in this particular case, um, the logo says Feed the Future, and it is placed right above the name of the project. So it would be extremely repetitive to have Feed the Future in the upper left and just below it Feed the Future West Africa Maze Improvement Project. So in this case, and I think we would recommend this for any project sign that is laid out in this manner, um, you would just have um, the, the region or country and the description of the project in the project name. So in this case, um, it just says West Africa Maze Improvement Project. So again, that's page 27 of the Graphic and Naming Standards Manual. Thanks, Caitlin. Question number three. I didn't catch how to manage the branding when using a government-to-government -government or G2G implementing mechanism. This is a great question. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're sort of working through a lot of these um, individual and specific questions. This is one where I think we would want to work with um, you and your AOR or core. Um, sort of treat it as a case-by-case -case basis so we can assess sort of the level of funding, the activity, um, where it is, et cetera. Um, typically, we would want to give the government uh, more prominence, but again, this is one that I think um, we would encourage you to send uh, to your AOR or COR and um, share with us at feedthefuturebranding at usa.gov so that we can work with you to come up with a solution that's compliant with our guidance but works for your particular scenario. Thanks, Wendy. Question number four, uh, I know Jen addressed this a little bit in the chat, but um, just in case more people have questions. Uh, the question is, can any final document be sent to Feed the Future team for branding and graphic clearance? Good question. Thank you. Um, we are delighted to have uh, the engagement and the questions. We're here to serve as a resource for you. We do want to make sure that if we are interfacing with any of our partners that we're engaging your core or AOR accordingly. So we would just ask that you work with them or keep them CC'd. If you want to reach out, we're happy to review your materials. Uh, again, the address is feedthefuturebranding at usaid.gov. Uh, and we'll take a look and we'll work with you and your core or AOR to come up with uh, solutions or to provide the quick glance and final approval. Um, and we do anticipate this is sort of an evolving process that as we all sort of go through um, this initial phase of implementation, we will sort of work through um, the kinks and the cases um, and just become more familiar and comfortable with it. So um, that is to say we're happy, again, to serve as a resource for you. Um, we do anticipate and we've gotten a lot of questions, um, which is exciting because uh, we know that um, everyone's been um, very interested and engaged uh, to implement the new branding guidelines. Um, we will do our best to get back to you within 24 hours. Um, but please just bear with us because we do expect um, after today's webinar and some additional training materials that we'll be rolling out, we'll be getting a lot of questions. Um, so we'll be managing that particular workflow so that we can get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, if you're not hearing from us, though, please do um, reach back out. But we, we again, will try to get back to you um, through your AOR, COR um, as soon as possible. Thank you, Wendy. And question number five. Where does the activity name go on materials? I know a lot of people were asking about this one. Yeah, so this is Caitlin again. Um, just one thing I want to make clear about the examples that you're seeing both in the manual and in the presentation we've gone through today. Um, the examples are, are by and large just that, examples. They're, they're meant to show placement and to generally show you how products might be laid out. Um, so just the one that's pulled up right now for acquisition instruments, that's an example of how a um, publication cover may look. It does not mean that any publication cover needs to look exactly like that. What it does mean is that the Feed the Future logo should go in the upper left and USAID in the lower left. Um, so that's really what it's meant to show you. So all that to say that um, the title would go wherever it makes the most sense given the design of the product that is being created. Um, so it'll really depend on the design. 
Thank you, Caitlin. And it looks like we have about 15 minutes left. We have a lot of more questions coming in, which is wonderful to see. Um, I think we'll take another five minute pause and then come back and try to answer um, as many more questions as we can in uh, the remaining time we have. So we'll see you again in five minutes. All right, thank you to everyone. Some really great questions continuing to come in. Um, for our first question, uh, does Feed the Future support the production of promotional items? That's a good question. It's another one we hear a lot. This is Wendy again. Uh, clarifications are coming in the updated version of the Feed the Future graphic and naming standards manual, which will be on feedthefuture.gov slash branding. But you should follow the USAID rules related to the production of branded promotional items for a project. So any Feed the Future branded pro promotional items should be outlined in a branding and marketing plan, which is approved by your AOR or COR. Promotional items should clearly support the development goals and objectives of the project or program. We generally tell people when they've asked this question, one thing to think about is uh, would U.S. government resources, um, how do we justify that um, if we want to do promotional items and can we sort of say that these will be in photographs and help um, increase awareness and visibility um, in ways that really justify using the funds for promotional items versus um, project activities. Thank you, Wendy. Second question, and this is one many people are asking, will templates be available? This is Caitlin, and yes, we will have templates available. Um, both fact sheet and PowerPoint templates are going to be uploaded to feedthefuture.gov slash branding, um, hopefully by mid next week. So we'll have those available for people to use. OK, question number three. On the cover of a report, below the report name, is it OK to have the name of the project and contract number? If not, where should they go? Um, so this is Caitlin again. Um, that's a really good question. I just want to go back to the slide that has the example of a publication cover for an acquisition instrument. Um, yes, we believe that the the name of the publication and the project name would both go on the cover. Um, as for the contract number, um, that would really depend on how you normally do it under any other USAID funded acquisition instrument. Um, the one thing I will mention is that there are some specific, there's some specific disclaimer language for both assistance and acquisition instruments that they should be using. Generally, we see that referenced on the front inside cover of a publication. Um, the new um, graphic and naming standards manual that we're going to be coming out with in the next several days will have some be the future specific language for those disclaimers. Um, but um, just as a reference, that's found under the USAID acquisition regulation or the ADAR. Um, and that does include a reference to the specific contract number. Thank you. Question number four. For established projects, what should the name be? Great. Thank you again for this question. Um, I think we'll kind of expand it. We discussed it here because we're seeing still a lot of questions um, on this related to some of the existing innovation labs as well. For established products, again, this is sort of the who does the branding, naming, and marking apply to. So um, we'll go back to the branding update slide that um, should be in front of you now. Um, so kind of looking at the decision tree, if your project was awarded on or after January 1st of 2015, um, this new naming and project uh, marking and branding guidance does apply to you. Um, if you were before that, um, you should be following your current or existing branding and marking plan um, unless or until you are um, extended with a cost extension that is um, for one year or more from the original end date. So essentially, um, if you were a project that existed prior to January 1st of 2015, um, keep doing what you're doing unless or until you're extended at a cost extension for over a year. Again, though, we would encourage those of you um, who can and are interested in adhering to the current branding and marketing plan, even if you fall into this um, space of we existed before January 1st of 2015 and we have a long project life left um, to adhere to the new guidelines um, but just to do that in coordination with your AOR or CUR and of course feel free to consult with us at be the future branding at USA.gov. Um, we hope that that answers that question um, just to, to be really clear follow uh, your current guidance but if you were issued 
on or after January 1st of this year, or if you're extended for a year or more with a cost extension, um, you will be required to follow these branding updates. So in the case where you may currently have an existing logo or uh, design, if you happen to be extended later on, you will be required to follow these branding updates, which could mean that you um, no longer are able to have the flexibility to incorporate an existing project logo. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Um, we're running out of time, but we have one more question we'll answer. Where would you place logos for sub-award institutes for an assistance award? Oh, okay. That was a really good question. I think we got that one from um, Dave Hoisington. Um, so let me go back to the assistance slide. Um, just to show an example, to have an example in front of us. So in this case, um, you would have Feed the Future in the upper left, USAID in the lower left, and then um, any implementing partner logos, including those included in sub-awards, to the right. And again, that would sort of depend on the product, um, who the implementer would choose to include. Um, but yes, so much like USAID branding guidelines, the Feed the Future branding guidelines flow down, right, to sub-awards. So you would just need to include all of them in that case. Okay, thank you, Wendy and Caitlin. Unfortunately, I think we're out of time for today, but um, there have been a lot of questions coming in, and I encourage you to email any specific questions and questions that we did not answer here to the Feed the Future branding at USA.gov email address. We'll post that one more time in the chat pod. Um, and we also wanted to let everyone know, because we saw that some people had some audio issues throughout the presentation, that we did record this session, and we will send out an email in about a week uh, to everyone who registered with the recording so that you can review this um, again. So please um, keep your eye out for that email, and keep an eye out for at the Feed the Future um, website for additional updates. So thank you again to Wendy and Caitlin for a great presentation and to Jen Cup for facilitating our webinar chat and to everyone who participated today. We greatly appreciate it and have a good day.